Cheers. <laughs> um, no noise on set, please. <laughs> Catch story was fun. This is yeah. this is fake wine, so it's for yeah. a set. So like, you, you, you're a friend. She'd want to have red in front of you. I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, of course. <laughs> it's it's okay. Red. People already know I export wine. No. So anyway, like I was saying, uh, I met you like seven years ago, and uh, it's just cool, like how far things have come with the trips. I mean, we had some trips, some years where we did two or three trips back to back. We started with one person with Dave, Lucky Dave, got to come on the first trip, and it's kind of grown into something of its own. And for me, it's been like a really special part of my life meeting all of you. It seems like it's just kind of like meant to unfold the way it has. I never thought I'd be in Europe riding my bike at this age. I know I'm not that young, but. But with my, my budgetary restraints that I've had, I always thought, you know, I'll go to Asia, I'll do things. And then when this all started up, it's been my opportunity to come to Europe and meeting you and then meeting Wayne through you, Toma, and then meeting you, Louise, through Wayne. Um, so I just want to take a minute, kind of chat with you all about it. Um, tell me tell me a little bit about uh, riding in Chamonix, Toma. It's crap. It is crap, yeah. <laughs> That's so good. Yeah. Who's it for? Sorry? Who's it for? People who like crappy riding? Well, yeah. So, uh, uh -huh. No, it's um, specific. Like everywhere, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's um, it's epic because you have a quite nice uh, scenery all the, all the way around. It's long descent, um, techy, mm. exposed, tricky sometimes. Depends on uh, the weather and the yeah. condition. But um, right, it's cool. Plenty of things to do. And to, uh, right. yeah. right. I've, I've been enjoying it. It's other than the couple times I fell on the ground. Um, and Louise, um, you're, just tell me a little bit about yourself, where you're from. I haven't had actually very much chance to talk to you, despite no, the fact well, that we've ridden together. <laughs> I'm just always trying to keep up with you. I'm from Sweden originally. I've been here for 12 years in mm -hmm. Finale, in Italy. Uh, I used to live in Chamonix, so that's why I guess I know Wayne. Okay. Um, but that's, yeah, a long time ago. Yeah. Wayne came to ride bikes here. I think that's where we got to know each other. Yeah. 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 And yeah, so I've been uh, guiding here for now 12 years wow. and um, really enjoy what I do. There's a lot of variety mm -hmm. in Finale and there's been a lot of uh, uh, like just change, more trails, yeah. new trails all the time. It's just expanding as we speak. What was it like when you first got here, like the scene, like the riding scene? Oh, did you feel, did you feel like, like it was like an emerging scene kind of? And you were no, like, not even. Like yeah. I was, uh, I came riding here in 2005 for the first time. And there was one shuttle company that had one or two buses. There was a shop that had a bus that we rode with. And that was it. Mm -hmm. That was it. And there was the base trail to Boga di Canova. Yeah, Madonna La Guardia. Yeah. Uh, it was really limited. Yeah. But it's so cool. Like, really cool. Yeah. But it was not even a 20% of what we have now. Yeah. So that's amazing. But it wasn't, you didn't even feel that it was going to kick off. That like, that's been the last five or six years. Probably. EWS, yeah. Yeah. It w yeah, but also, I mean, the enduro racing came around earlier than that, and the yeah. development of the new bikes made like because in finale, a cross country bike was not enough, and a downhill bike was too much. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I mean, we rode downhill bikes, but it was too much. And with the enduro bikes, it's just it's just the right place to have an enduro bike, and it just made it so much more clear what like what we're riding. You can do everything here with an enduro bike. Yeah. I was speaking with Gianluca, who owns a place uh, here, who owns this property, and he was saying that, that uh, people are trying to like draw together and kind of, kind of create some organization out of the madness because it's really blown up here. Mm -hmm. Like it's changed a lot, mm -hmm. and uh, I mean the same thing in Chamonix. Like when we, when I first went there seven years ago, it felt like we were kind of like the black sheep, kind of like hey, you know, just trying to ride our bikes, and people weren't so happy. And now they're kind of like, no, it's normal there. So it seems like it's getting better. It's getting yeah. better. It's yeah. not as big as. Is, uh, in finale, but yeah, they, they try to, um, to push it more. Yeah. But that's in the same time, that's the kind of um, um, spirit you can have in Chamonix. Mm -hmm. You share the trails with plenty of people, uh, uh, walkers, uh, runners, because there's a lot of uh, trailers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's that's part of uh, Chamonix because it is more mountaineering, mm -hmm. and long, long descent. And, yeah, it's more adventure. I would say in here you have so much choice. In Germany you have less choices about choosing a, a good trail. Uh, it's pretty long. And then yeah, you have to, you have to push up. Yeah. 
think. Bike carrying. Right. Car carrying, carrying the bike on occasion. Uh, yeah, adventure riding. The, yeah, your bike is yeah. the good one. Also, I mean, in the past, uh, as um, we were saying, uh, we were all having downhill bikes. Carrying this heavy bike. I remember bikes. that the first year there, you said, bring a downhill bike. Yeah. Yeah. Second yeah. year. Yeah. yeah. And now you can pedal, you can push, you can carry your bike. It's yeah. way easier. It's still exhausting. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. It's, uh, yeah, I started bit. riding in Chamonix. Yeah. We had like <clears throat> 20 kilo bikes right. carrying them up. Like, like the full protection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You had like all the protection. Yeah. It's crazy. Oh, the bikes have come a long way. Uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah. So now, uh, yeah. And uh, like, and Wayne, I, I mean, I think I met you one time. I was coming down to, to meet Toma for a trip, and I met you very briefly. I didn't know didn't know who you were. Didn't really care. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, um, it's okay, man. Uh, and then uh, Toma gave me a phone call like a week or two weeks before a trip, maybe three years ago. And he said, "Oh man, I, you know, got really into trying to race enduro, and it broke broke my hand." And he's like, "I, I can't ride." And I was like, "Oh shit, what are we gonna do?" And uh, he said, oh, "Don't worry, Wayne's gonna Wayne's gonna run the crew." And I was like, "Wayne, who's Wayne?" And he said, "Oh, you, you met him once for like ten seconds, you know." Um, and then you know you ended up being the cook with your left hand. You cooked that week and cooked all your grandma's recipes. Yep, that was awesome. Yeah, and the food, that was the best food we've ever had on any of the trips. Everything else has been a disappointment. So for anybody who was on that trip, uh, I apologize for my cooking uh, since then. But that was, an, that was an opportunity for you to get involved. And uh, you, you know, it was kind of a natural thing because you had the, you know, the fleet of vans for yeah. your company there already. And so what was, that, what, what's that, what was that like for you as you kind of thought about, like, maybe I could do this as part of my job is that yeah this, this doesn't yeah, stop you out. yeah it's just good yeah. fun yeah riding with all the crew showing them around like tom was saying like with chamonix it is quite specific riding mm -hmm. um it's definitely got the huge vistas massive views yeah. like the sort of wow factor um, but the beauty of chamonix is you've got switzerland on one side italy on the other mm -hmm. um we're in france there's so much good riding all within Within an hour's drive or even less, so there is just yeah. and different climatic zones. Yeah. I mean, like when yeah, it's yeah. rainy and cold. Yeah. I remember one day it was probably like, you know, I don't know, forty degrees Fahrenheit, and we went through the tunnel and popped out in the Alta, so, and it was like <laughs> seventy-five. So it's sunny weather. Yeah. yeah, it was pretty sweet. Yeah, and the trails yeah. were dry, and it was yeah. just to see that kind of difference is like a real eye opener for me. I had no idea that yeah. that really existed. Yeah, you know? so and that's that's kind of our like I sort of get pleasure out of a little bit is um or a lot it's taking <laughs> people to those places mm -hmm. to experience those experiences going to other places so that for me is a big part of you know when you guys come over yeah um, but that's a fantastic to... part with europe it's yeah so close yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah and you can do so many things do so many things yeah, so, really uh, yeah. And what are the things that for me that's like happened in the areas where we live and it's i think it's seems to be happening here and it seems to be happening in uh in chamonix <laughs> valley as well as the development of more uh, of more accessible routes for people who are newer to the sport because i think like when we first started it was kind of like throw a rock down the hill and be like okay all right follow it down you know everybody else follow me and that, that's kind of how it is like uh, we, have, we have this little clandestine location just out of seattle called exit 38 and that was the riding spot but there were like 20 people who could ride it and, like everybody else was yeah. just like you know riding around on the pavement you know and yeah. now there's we have all like these that. progression yeah. trails and it seems yeah. like there's more yeah. there's yeah. more like kind of welcoming ways to get started yeah, like yeah. for people who aren't uh yeah. Like Lou was saying here, when we first came riding with you, I think it was just like we did NATO and then you took us on the off road stuff, like back of beyond that no one would have ever found. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's kind of what me and Timmy try and also do in Chamonix is like <clears throat> if you came to Chamonix to ride, it's not obvious. It's not obvious yeah. at all. Like, yeah. So, yeah, we want to show you the things that are there yeah. that aren't so obvious. And, I think I've cumulatively spent like about four months there now in Chamonix and mm. I, there are a lot of routes I know, but every time you guys are showing me something new, yeah, you know, yeah. and it's, I remember one time we stopped on a gravel road and Timmy was like, stop, 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 what am I stopping here for? And you just like parted, parted the ferns. Mm -hmm. it like, Whoa, oh. And it's just like riding Nirvana, mm -hmm. just like loam down awesome. the other side. Awesome. Up by the flower, there was that place there with the flower, uh, all the flowers, the cafe up there on the side of the hill. Yeah, by yeah. Track, the floor area yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Ah, yeah, so, I mean, yeah. 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 So just some like really magical moments for me uh, to experience like that, and then coming here, you know, introducing me to Louise, and um, and having this whole space open up now has has been great for me. I mean, I I spent a lot of time teaching 
everybody and I'm in kind of one little park which I love I love my job but coming here is, is like freedom on the bike for me just getting to go and uh, let go of the brakes like no no uh, offense to any of my students but uh, let go of my brakes a little bit have a good time and um, yeah so anything else you guys want to add about the, about the experiences here or this year yeah maybe maybe something about this year yeah we got lucky with the weather it's kind of getting a little bit like, dark you know yeah. I mean, like it was Sunny every day, basically. Yeah, yeah. Got a little rainy yeah, today. Great. The like obviously, first time working with Lou. That's been awesome. Yeah, um, I think everyone's had a great time. Yeah, yeah. kept everyone everybody healthy. Together. And we had like you know a good um, variation of abilities, mm -hmm. and everyone got to ride yeah. everything. And that's that's actually one of the nice yeah, things, yeah. And, which is yeah. awesome. Like having yeah. having two vehicles and two trailers yeah. like we do in Chamonix yeah. and like we do here is a big thing. And yeah, yeah. for me, the the real magic here was all the stuff that that you've shown me with the four by four, like mm -hmm. all the going up to the four by four tracks where the vans can't really go, the normal vans can't go, and the, the trails are fairly untouched compared to the, most of the trails we ride back home. Yeah, I mean those areas are also the newest areas. Mm -hmm. I mean that's kind of where it's been expanding to. So yeah. that also makes that is less ridden. Yeah. Um, requires more effort to get there it requires more effort to get there but they're also the newest areas yeah yeah they've been added on i mean the it's kind of a way i mean you everyone wants a piece of the cake so they're mm -hmm. making stuff to like get a part of finalis tourism yeah um which is super cool for us because we get new trails and when you say that you also mean like people in the little towns and things mm -hmm. like that too because yeah, I mean, yeah. it seems like we, we're dropping down to these little towns and they're very yeah, very happy to see us you yeah, know like yeah, yeah. Come and no, cool. come and have lunch, and yeah. um, surprisingly, con considering we're right next to the Mediterranean, some of the places just over the back of the hills, a few miles away, are pretty remote. You know, Very remote. like in my own mind, before I spent time in Europe or spent time in this area, I never imagined. I just never imagined that. I imagined just like you know, like I don't know, casinos and like all kinds of like um, development. I know that exists in places. You know, yeah. I guess if I mean it's enough if you go to France, it's a lot more developed. Yeah. <laughs> this side of the the border yeah and it's yeah as you say it's enough for 20 or 25 kilometers you're behind and there's a lumberjack village where people work at the factory and yeah. yeah they don't see many tourists at all yeah and it's yeah it's so close so it's a it's really cool been a cool opportunity for me to just kind of experience some of the culture that doesn't seem to have changed as much as one would think it would have yeah, no, it's, it's really kind of like going back still. in time yeah yeah, yeah, yeah so super super cool so thanks That's, yeah thanks thanks to uh to all of you for all the amazing experiences I've had with you guys and I really appreciate it. And, Thank you. Um, looking forward to many more. In the future. Cheers. Guys. Cheers. Salute. Cheers. Salute. 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 We're in Italy. <laughs> Very good. I think one of the good cool things to see this week was um <laughs> was the people who uh, maybe weren't so confident. Yeah. Oh, that's always the, you know, that's the beautiful thing is to... Like on the yeah. Alps trips, mm -hmm. start of the week, and then by the end of it, I think it's sort of, yeah. you know, finding their flow, getting super stoked on yeah. uh, being shown around by Lou on the EWS trails that mm -hmm. she's won yeah, on. Yeah, I heard a lot of talk um, about that. Yeah, <laughs> there's been a lot of chat about the EWS stages this <laughs> week and how, and like, for for the riders to appreciate how, how hard it actually is. Yeah. Yeah, when, when I was walking down it. one of the sections looking at it, I thought, wow, this looks pretty hard to ride. And we rode right down. I was like, yeah, that was pretty easy. <laughs> I have been yeah. there before. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, true. It was that's my true. First day. Yeah, yeah, but still, it's like, you that's can watch it on YouTube and things like that. And it go, doesn't, it doesn't, oh, yeah, yeah, I, I think I could, I, I could do that. that. Yeah. And then you, you get, get there and you're like, oh, I could ride it, but I don't want to race it. Yeah, that's for sure. It builds good perspective. Everybody who comes on the trips with us, basically, when they go home, they say, like, did they change the trails at home? I remember the first time I showed you a video of me riding mm. on one of my home tracks at Tiger. You said, "Do they use the do they use the rake and the broom like to build the track?" <laughs> you know, because it was like for us, it's a technical trail back home. But our trails are managed by a really great organization, and, and it, that's great. They're really sustainable, but they're not um, they're not as real as they are here. And I think people acclimate relatively quickly. And, yeah. Unfortunately, like fortunately, um, anarchy has brought the scene to Finale because mm -hmm. if it wasn't here uh, this could never have happened I mean even in like I've spoken to people in Sweden in certain areas or in Germany in certain areas yeah. you can't just go and build a trail yeah you know it get closed and we like, have the same thing yeah. yeah so I mean the good thing about here is that there's so much land that nobody ever goes to and we've been able to make these 
abuse of trails that then now become map. Yeah. Um, and this has been so good. So the new areas are actually asking the you know the landowners for permission mm -hmm. for us. It started in a different way 15 years ago, yeah. which has been awesome. But that means that we can't actually go with a bulldozer, we can't go with machines to sure. sort the trails. Yeah. It's, it's all man-made, yeah. which makes m maintenance really, really hard. Yeah. So that's why we don't ride when it's heavy rain mm -hmm. to keep the trails, and that makes them, you know, less smooth. Yeah. Because For sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, we actually have a place near Seattle. It's called Darrington, and it. Uh, it's got a kind of the economy is kind of suffering and it's interesting now to see the town saying like hey can, can you can you come and can you build some trails and bring some some tourism to our area it's maybe only an hour and a half or an hour from from seattle and it's maybe a place that wouldn't have welcomed our sport in the past but there i think people are really starting to see the like economic mm -hmm. implications yep. and that we're not like so bad after all you know as riders you know we're, we're all right we're okay so yeah but I like that, you know, what you were saying about um, people starting to gain confidence and, and to mm. kind of like build their own sense of confidence. And for me, like when I coach mountain biking, um, I've done a little bit of coaching with free diving and things that are scary, things that like really draw out your that like human instinct of fear. It's really uh, an amazing thing to the process to watch somebody start to exceed their, their own self-perceived limitations. Yeah. Mm. And that's something that we've all all of us as athletes have butted up against. You know, you think, oh, I can do this, but I can't do that. And then you start to go, oh, no, no, I can do that. You know, and you just start to kind yeah. of build on that. And I think that that's, it's, it's like life, you know, like you, you put yourself up against a challenge and that's really what tests you. Yeah, and I think an area like this can make you go there gradually. Yeah. And then you ride something that you never thought you could ride. And you actually go home and you say you have a completely different perspective. Of Absolutely. Your home Even if you it walk some of the sections. You that yeah, bit yeah. Of, okay, but I've, done things that are worse than this and exactly. yeah, I can totally ride this now. Yeah. You'll definitely leave here and Germany knowing how to ride Switchback. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like definitely. Yeah. And, yeah. So commitment also. Get yeah, the commitment. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Moving into the hill. Yeah, definitely. Nice. Awesome. I don't know how Lou managed to stay so clean today. <laughs> uh, What's going on? Jumping over all the puddles that you guys are hitting. Yeah, it looks like it worked out pretty well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bunny hopping as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all the no puddles. I'm Italian. No puddles for her. After yeah. all these years, I'm semi-Italian. Yeah. You don't get your feet wet. You don't get your feet wet. Maybe it was the polite Frenchman like clearing the puddles for you in front. No. You know? uh, yesterday I broke so, <laughs> so hard I crashed because I didn't want to get it. Because <laughs> you didn't want to get money. <laughs> and like then me. I got really money. <laughs> Sounds like me. Yeah. yeah. I, I fell into a creek yesterday. So <laughs> that's what. That's why I'm so clean. <laughs> Awesome. Thanks, guys. Yeah. <laughs> we'll put subtitles. Especially for Toma. <laughs> no, you don't want that bit. Loads of hair sticking out. Yeah.